Hi everyone, I'm Ari with First Updates Now here at the Hartford District event. We're here with Team 7407, the Wired Boars, who have a very interesting machine here. They're going to take us through a few different of their mechanisms, including their forks and their frame and their programming. Coming up next on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University is looking for talented robotics students who want to continue learning and innovating in a hands-on real-world experience format. Kettering University representatives will be at dozens of FIRST events this season, including the championship. Go to kettering.edu slash FIRST to see which events you can meet a Kettering University representative. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. I'm here with William, Sherry, and Sid to take us few, through a few of their different mechanisms. Can you start with the intake and forks mechanisms? Those are some of my favorite things that I've seen out on the field today. Sure, so this is our cube intake. It allows us to intake cubes from the ground. And what it does is that it intakes with these rollers. And then it'll intake into this area where we have this shield. And what this allows us to do is actually hold a cube in here and not hand it off to the claw. And so we can keep this in and score low, which is, allows us to do floor cube low scoring really, really quick. But if we want to score in a higher node, then we can pick this up into our claw with a handoff and then score into higher nodes. Uh, we, we also have this climber here. So what this allows us to do is buddy climb. And we can triple climb really easily because we're such a big robot. We're 29 by 29, which means that we have to get up the side of the charge station. And how we do this is our two alliance partners climb up under the charge station, and then we get under them with these forks. Uh, do we want to put them down? Yeah. So we get onto the, these forks, drop under the charge station, and we get underneath our alliance partner. And what happens is that we react under, on the underneath of their robot, which allows us to climb upwards. And since we're only supported by the alliance partner and the charge station, we're technically climbed. All right, that is a really cool design, especially with how it's been mounted. Do we want to take us through a bit more of the frame and how this robot all comes together? Yeah, sure. So uh, for our game piece manipulation, we have a uh, three degree of freedom arm, which uh, our first degree of motion is a rotary motion. Basically here, we have um, 3D prints bolted into just a big plate sprocket. And when that rotates, it rotates our entire elevator along with it. And a neat thing about that feature is that we actually have a bicycle disc brake. If you want to come, come around that way, maybe. OK, wait. Sorry. If you come around this way, we have a bicycle disc brake over here where the piston basically locks it in. And we clamp down on ourselves so that even when the robot is not on, like, it's not enabled and the motors are not turning. There's practically no way for our arm to fall out of its original position. And uh, so that's our first degree of freedom. The second degree we have then is our uh, wrist mechanism, in which case we have a double uh, printed double herringbone gear that allows our wrist to flick up and down like this. And of course, the third degree of freedom is our linear motion in which our elevator uh, shout outs to, by the way, um, we made this elevator from uh, Thrifty Bots, one of our main sponsors. And um, it allowed us to manufacture this elevator in under two weeks uh, once build season started. And that gives us the linear motion we need to reach up onto the high and score high cones and high cubes. So you have a lot of 3D printed parts on this robot. How long did it take to make sure that those don't break and what materials are you using there? Yeah, so uh, our team primarily focused on using the Mark Forge printers to print out our things. This includes some of our claw pulleys, uh, some of our uh, disc brake mechanisms, and our camera mounts, and all that stuff. Uh, usually, we just go with the default Mark Forge settings, and uh, sometimes the prints are printed overnight, but usually they're less than like 10 hours long. And as you can also see, we bring our Mark Forge with us to the event to make sure in the event of any emergency repairs, we can do so. But yeah. That is fantastic. I love that you've actually brought the printer with you today. So 
This robot is intensely complex. You've got a lot of different mechanical things going on here, and they all need to work in tandem in order to create this great robot. So what brings it all together is programming, and there is definitely a lot of programming going on here. So, Sid, will you take us through a bit of the programming here? Sure. So uh, first off, we in programming, we have set points for all of the different scoring and picking up positions. So like if we want to go mid, our arm will automatically extend and uh, set the angle to the desired position. And then the driver can just maneuver it a bit. Um, additionally, we can use our gyro angle to determine which way the arm will extend. So, for example, if we want to score and the uh, and our intake is facing this direction, then our arm will extend out this direction so that we can score easier. Um, as you can see, we have these uh, two cameras on the robot over here, the, on the front and back. And we're using those to track the April tags using photon vision. And uh, we're using them not only in auto, but also during teleop, because we managed to get auto routing working. So the operator can use this numpad over here to select a scoring position or a position on the field. And then when the driver holds a button on their controller, the robot will automatically route to that scoring position and then the operator can extend and drop off their pieces. Um, then uh, additionally, we have uh, an IR sensor on the claw over here that we're using to automatically grab game pieces. And we can have different like IR set points for like different positions. So for example, if we're grabbing from the floor, we can have a different IR threshold. If we're grabbing from the double station and we want to differentiate between cones and cubes, we can have different thresholds. So the robot knows, or, or the robot can like auto grab pieces when it's ready to. Great, thank you. All right, one last question for all of you. So you've been an Open Alliance team this season. We've enjoyed having you on the show. So how has that benefited you and how has that impacted you as a team? Well, I guess I can go first and if my teammates have anything else to add, uh, feel free. So I think personally, uh, being at Open Alliance has been a wonderful experience. Uh, I'm part of the you know more mechanical side of things. I think being uh, Open Alliance encouraged us to document more and uh, also, it encouraged us to share our ideas with other teams and potentially iterate our design upon seeing other teams' designs as well. And uh, also, I guess when it comes to the climber, it was really exciting to see other teams with similar concepts when everyone's robot reveals came out. So that was uh, really exciting for us. And we know that uh, some teams have personally reached out to us and said, you know, thanks for sharing our design. So that was super cool to hear. And we're glad that like we're, uh, Open Alliance has been a wonderful opportunity for us to participate and engage with the first community more. Thank you. All right. So can we see this thing in action? Okay. So first I'll demonstrate the cube intake. So as you can see, it can come down without the arm and to just grab a cube for like low scoring. But then we can, yeah. But then we can also bring our entire arm down to pick up the claw. Uh, and then what we can do is we can extend once we have the game piece to, for example, mid. And then once we're here, we have uh, operator controls for um, setting up the scoring and then dropping it off into the scoring position. Uh, so then we have different positions for mid, that which we just showed you for high. Yeah, we have a low scoring position over here. And then um, we also have picking from the double station and it can do all of these from either side so if we were to rotate the robot it would do it from the other side okay well thank you very much 7407 uh, yeah. definitely a cool robot that you have here looking forward to seeing it on the field more here and at district championships coming up next week so good luck with the rest of the competition thank you this video on first updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors Kettering University is looking for talented robotic students who want to continue learning and innovating in a hands-on real-world experience format. Kettering University representatives will be at dozens of FIRST events this season, including the championship. Go to kettering.edu slash FIRST to see which events you can meet a Kettering University representative. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash FIRST updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos.
keep the conversation going, and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now, and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.